time for another really fun, fast project. This is a simplicity pattern, R10386. It is a reproduction of a vintage pattern that they've had in the past. And I almost didn't order this and started to make it without the pattern, but I decided to go ahead and um, order the pattern because it's literally just a rectangle. So this is the fabric. It's, this is a nice um, stretch knit. I am not an animal print person, I'll just tell you, but it was very inexpensive and it's a nice quality fabric. So I, I don't know that I would ever wear this project, but I thought it would be really fun and I wanted to try it out. I wanted to review the pattern for all of you and let you see what it's like. The reason I don't think I would wear this pattern is because it does not have a closure. It actually shows just tucking over, it's like crossing over or tucking it into the waistband of your clothes. So I may, um, I'm, I'm considering adding a closure whether it's a couple snaps or something because I would never put on a top that does not close especially if you're a big busted girl I just can't imagine but anyway it's super cute it's a rectangle I've already cut out um, it actually does even though it's just a rectangle it does come in sizes so the rectangles get larger it takes seven eighths of a yard no matter what size you're making this comes in small medium and large and it's just folded. You cut out your little square, you open it up, it becomes a rectangle. The thing that's nice about buying the pattern, because you probably could make this without the pattern. If you have, it's sort of like an origami thing. You figure out where to fold what, what to sew together. You have a, a shirt, or even this would be a cute bed jacket, which I am considering making this in a charmeuse as a bed jacket. The reason I decided to choose to go ahead and buy the pattern to make it was number one, because I'm reviewing it for all of you that will watch it. And the pattern has all of the little markings so you know where to sew the things together. So I'm gonna open this up. I haven't pressed it yet, and I do like to press my patterns. I like a nice crispy pattern. I'm just going to roll back a little bit here. Here it is, and it shows, here's our fold line. So nothing really happens on the fold line. It's just for cutting purposes. Can you see these two little dots? That's for hemming. Over here it shows where we're gonna stitch together. Um, and then this is a fold over at the neckline. There's just not a lot to it. It's pretty straightforward. I think it'll be very fast. So I'm gonna iron my pattern. I'm gonna cut it out. I'm not gonna show you that because literally we're just cutting a square on the fold. And then I'll start showing you when I start pinning together to sew it not having to search this knit and it doesn't um, fray you can search this if you want to but i'm just going to sew it with a small zigzag on my sewing machine so that it stretches nicely and it's a breeze cutting out took one minute literally laid it down cut off the excess i didn't need it is the width of the pattern is about 60 inches wide which is about what my my fabric is so nothing to cutting the first step is to sew the center back seam in on this size I'm doing a large it's just an 8 inch seam along the um, with selvage to selvage so I'm going to just sew my 5 8 inch in width in about 8 inches long back stitch so that's step one again an 8 inch seam just a few seconds to sew here's my little center back seam you can see it's short now we're going to flip this around so that the center back seam is in the center of the garment, like so. And if you look at the pattern, you can see the little circles there. That's to help us know where um, we're sewing and where we're not sewing. So those little circles are the opening where the arm is going to be. So if we were going to mark it be like this circle to circle this is the opening for the arm and then we sew across circle to circle so this is going to be across the shoulders this is the back the back of the garment and these are little armhole openings that's the armhole opening put my pins in like this all right so now i'm going to sew this from this point to this point, that's our center back, and then the shirt's together. All that's left at that point is to do hems. So I'm gonna sew this really quickly, and then I'll show you where we fold over for hems. So I've sewn my long seam, got my little openings for the arms, and I'm gonna just flip this around. I have not hemmed anything. It does have, so this long side here, where nothing is sewn, it has an inch and a half allowed for hem. The nice thing about that is if you want to make it a little narrower to fit better, you can. Here's my little armhole, so that just turns in and stitches. Let's grab the dress form. Here's our dress form. Take off 
her t-shirt and we're going to put this on. Now, I, again, I have not um, hemmed anything. So, it should go like this. I think. Yep. Here's my center back. Here's my little armholes. That does not seem right at all. But that doesn't mean it's not. I know the armhole is really low, like down here, which is awkward to me, but there you are. And then this, yeah, that is right. <laughs> okay. This just folds around in the front. Let me back up. Back up with my girl. Okay. Go. Now, again, I made a large, and this is not a large dress form. These just overlap like this. You're supposed to take those tails and tuck them into your waistband. Here's your armholes. Here's the center back. So I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to pull this up so it's just a little easier to see. So here's my center back seam, and here's the across the shoulder seam. It's an odd little thing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do all the hemming. I may have to put this on. I'll put on a tank top or something and um, put it on me just so you can see because it is so large. Um, it's, it's interesting. I'm going to do the hemming. I have sewn about three minutes. No, I haven't even sewn that long. Less than three minutes is what I've spent on this. I spent more time just fiddling with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the little hems, which is just turning up inside the little armholes and um, around the front and then this little um, piece back here. I can say that seems awfully short. I almost feel like I could make this a little longer back here. This is this, that center back seam that was only like eight inches. I probably could sew that and make it a little longer. The thing is, it gives you less room to wrap around your waist the longer this is. So um, there's a little uh, give and take there. So I'm, I'm curious. I'm just gonna sew it the way it is and we'll see. It kind of comes way up in the back and flips around. It's just not meant, this is not meant for my figure type. It's cute though. And I could see some people wearing it. It almost, to me, like when I was looking at it, I thought, oh, that could be a bed jacket. I could see that being a little bed jacket um, over something, but definitely just not my size. So I'm going to put it on my dress form. I'm going to put a little piece of elastic around this waist, and we're going to do this again. So here's our dress form. And the way this goes on is that long piece goes around like this pull out its little sleeves. It doesn't really have a sleeve, it just has sort of an armhole. But here's the armholes. And then just drapes around the shoulder. Now if this were made in the right size, I could see how this might, this is supposed to cross over. So there's a little loose piece of elastic right here. And you tuck that in your waistband. So we're pretending that's our waistband. And that is the top in the front and then we turn around to the back here it is in the back now again this is a large and this dress form is about a size 8 ready to wear um, in a pattern it'd probably be a 12 maybe a 10 12 um, pattern and the large in the is I think a size 18 maybe I'm not sure so anyway that's how it is if this um, the way it shows is this actually being shorter so uh, on the picture if it fit right, it would be more like this in the back, a little smoother. And then here's the front. So that's it. Um, super cute. I don't think it, it doesn't work if you're long waisted. Um, it just didn't work. It won't work if you're over a certain size. Like it's just they don't. It doesn't even come in my size. And because of how it's cut um, with the 60 inch across, it you couldn't make this particular pattern work. You'd have to do a lot. You'd have to change it. You couldn't have a one yard shirt the way the pattern is. So cute, fast, super fast. You want a super fun little top that you could throw over something. I could see you wearing this, you know, if you had a cami, you could throw this over it. It would look really pretty under a blazer or a sweater, something like that, because this part's very pretty and blousey. So not a bad pattern. It's kind of fun um, to do. Nice in a print like this. Would not work great for obvious stripes, diagonals, that sort of thing because of the um, way the fabric twists, drapes, and sews together here. You have a crosswise and a lengthwise grain meeting. So if you have stripes, you might have stripes going up and down here and across here and then kind of being funky. It could look cute if you did a really 
good job and really matched everything up, but I think it could be a little difficult. So that's my thoughts on this little fun vintage pattern. And if you like my shirt, I um, put an iCard.